who you once were, it can be a weakness, if you will. It can be a hindrance for you. Some people are able to progress forward, to move forward in their new identity as a child of God because their adversary knows who they once were. The soldiers in his army, they know who we once were. As I asked last week, I will ask all of you again this week. Do you know who you are? Now, at the end of my sermon last week, my hope is that all of you will claim that identity of yours, your true identity that lies within your heart as that as a child of God. Now, if you walk in that identity, if you walk in and if you claim your identity as a child of God, I said it last week and I'll say it again this week, you have an adversary. Not just any kind of adversary. You have an adversary that studies you, that examines you thoroughly. And the reason why your adversary is studying and examining you so thoroughly is because your adversary is trying to find your every weakness. Mm -hmm. Your adversary wants to find your weakness and then exploit your weakness so that he can take over and control you. Now, with that in mind, if your adversary, if he studies you so thoroughly, so intensely, Mm -hmm. I would ask all of you today, well, shouldn't you be doing the same with yourself? Shouldn't you be looking at and examining yourself thoroughly? Now, I would tell all of you today that, yes, you should. I would tell all of you today that you need to confront yourself to know all of your faults, to know all of your flaws, to know your every weakness so that you can strengthen your weakness so that your adversary can't not take advantage of and exploit you because that's exactly what your adversary wants to do. Yet, the sad thing is that many of us, we we aren't doing that. Many of us, we don't examine Mm -hmm. ourselves. Mm -hmm. And because many of us, we don't examine ourselves, many of us, we end up struggling and we end up losing inner battles of turmoil. We, We end up losing battles with our adversary who knows every button of ours to push. Many of us, we are struggling today with the devil constantly stirring up our soul. I would ask how many of us have lost to our inner turmoil, our inner conflicts of doubt, Mm -hmm. our inner conflicts with worry and and fear, Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. our inner conflicts of acceptance knowing our worth. How many of us have lost out because we don't know our worth? We don't know what we're worth, our value. How many of us, in other words, have lost ourselves Mm -hmm. because we did not take the time nor the effort to confront ourselves, to look within our own hearts, to examine who We are many of us think that we know who we are, but we haven't studied ourselves to know exactly who we are. 
I tell you today that introspection, self-examination is extremely important. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. I tell you today that introspection, it is incredibly healthy for all people to take part in, mm -hmm. especially those that take on the identity of being a child of God. You see, Jeremiah, he spoke on the importance of one needing to examine themselves. He did this in the book of Lamentations, the third chapter in the 40th verse, mm -hmm. where Israel, Jeremiah said, needed to examine themselves. Jeremiah said that they needed to search out, know who they were, because Israel, they have faltered and they have failed. They have fall, fallen to the Babylonians because they were living in sin. Mm -hmm. And so Jeremiah said to them, hey, we need to take a moment to search out and examine ourselves mm -hmm. so that we can improve, so that we can grow, so that we can get back on the right track. All right. All right. How many of you today are doing just that to make right. sure that you mm -hmm. are staying on the right track? I would again ask you today, do you identify as a child of God? Mm -hmm. And if you do, I would then ask you, well, are you bothering to examine your heart? Mm -hmm. I tell you that the one that refuses to look within his heart, to look within his own soul, I would tell you that that person can't truly walk with the Lord. Mm -hmm. I don't know if you hear me. If you say that you're a child of God, but you're not looking within your own heart. You can't truly walk with the Lord. Now, why is it that I am saying that? Well, if you aren't looking within, I would ask you, well, how can you know your faults? How can you know your flaws? But do you think you're perfect? The perfect man can't walk with the Lord. The one that thinks that they're perfect anyway. See, the rich young ruler is an example of that. Yeah, yeah. Thought that it was perfect. Mm -hmm. Say, hey, I, I can walk with you, Jesus. And then Jesus turned around and said, oh, okay, well, you think, you think that? Well, hey, you did this. <laughs> you said you did everything, but now you turn around and said that you didn't do this one thing. Well, you, mm -hmm. you're failing. We must, again, I tell you today, we must examine ourselves thoroughly. If you don't examine yourself thoroughly, how can you withstand an adversary that knows all your buttons to push? As I have said, again, we must confront every single facet of who we are within so that we can strengthen our every weakness. So that we can leave little to nothing for our adversary to throw into our face to get us to fall down. Mm -hmm. You see, through examination of your soul, I tell you today that you will gain a very powerful weapon. Mm -hmm. All right. I tell you today that, again, through examination of your soul, you will gain a weapon of self-control. Mm -hmm. Do you realize that self-control is a very important weapon for right. you, right. the child of God, to have? You see, when you learn self-control, you'll be able to withstand all the temptations. When you learn self-control, you'll be able to withstand all the deceptions of your great adversary, the devil. Now, in scripture, one that comes to my mind who needed to confront himself would be my friend Paul. You see, Paul, he had what could have been a major hindrance that the adversary could have taken full advantage over had Paul not confronted who he was. Now, somebody may wonder, well, what, what are you talking about, Pastor? What are you talking about, preacher? What about Paul here? Well, Paul, he had a history. If you will. Now, I, I want to explain what I mean by the fact that Paul had a history. 
that could have been a great hindrance to him. That could have been a great weakness to him. Let me explain some things to you about Paul. You see, Paul, he was raised to live according to the Mosaic law. And Paul, he was one that did live by the law. And because he was raised to live by the law, and because he did live by the law, there was a day where Paul, he acted out of ignorance towards all of those who were of the early church. All those early believers that was following in the way, the new way of Christ. Paul, he looked at them and he saw in his eyes blasphemers. Those that blasphemed the law. And again, in his eyes, he saw those that were blaspheming the Lord. Do you know how Paul acted towards them? I will tell y'all that he didn't act all that kindly towards them. You see, Paul, out of his ignorance, he acted very wickedly towards them. In fact, to the Galatians, Paul admitted that he was once a great threat to the church, the early church, because Paul admittedly said that he was one that persecuted the church with the intent of destroying the church. You see, Paul, he moved with malice against those new believers. He moved with intent to destroy. He was there and he admitted that he was there. He admitted that he led the charge in the stoning of someone like Stephen. That's not to mention the great threat and the harm that he did to others that not even recorded in scripture. However, after he was visited, had a little visit from Christ on the road to Damascus, that that little talk with Jesus, it transformed Paul. He had a change of identity, if you will. And in that change of identity, after he was born again, Paul, he went to work for the Lord. He traveled throughout the land, ministering, sharing the good news. He wrote most of the scripture that's in, in our New Testament that, that many of us learn from, that pastors love to preach from. Here I am. I'm referencing him right here, right now. But, but this change of heart here for Paul, he didn't find things so easy as he was laboring for the Lord. You see, Paul, he was, in a manner of speaking, hindered, if you will. Paul admitted that he had a thorn in the flesh, if you will. You see, Paul, he wasn't so well received after his change of identity, when again, he was going throughout the land, doing what we would say was good work. He was doing God's work. You see, why was he not so well received? Well, he wasn't so well received because he had a history. And that history, it could have been a weakness for him. You see, Paul, he wasn't well received from the start. Even Ananias questioned God for sending him to help Paul because Paul, he had a history. You see, when Paul first began to preach the good news, the people, they, they would come and they would see Paul, they would hear Paul, but the whole time they wasn't able to take in the message. Because, hey, that was Paul. Paul had a history. Even the disciples, when Paul went up to Jerusalem, you know, after that change of heart for the first time, even the disciples, they was looking at Paul kind of strange. <laughs> Scripture tells us that they were afraid, that they were reluctant, because, again, 
Paul, he had a past. He had a history. I tell you, people, they try to tell you that they are forgetful, that they don't have good memory. But I tell you today that people ain't as forgetful as they try to lead on. You see, these people, they remember Paul. We laugh about it. But what if I told you that they remember you? They remember who you were, don't they? You see, who you once was, it can be a tough stigma for you to shake for, for, for people, others, to let go. Who you once were, it can be a weakness, if you will. It can be a hindrance for you. Some people are able to progress forward, to move forward in their new identity as a child of God because their adversary knows who they once were. All right. All right. The soldiers in his army, they know who we once were. And so I tell you today, using again Paul for a reference here, that the devil... He tried this with Paul. You think that the devil let Paul escape with that kind of history? When when, when the devil would have been sitting there, hey, yeah, yeah, keep on persecuting Paul. Hey, you do a good job. You think the devil was going to let that go? The devil, he tried to hinder Paul in his growth and in his transformation as a a child of God, a servant of the Lord. But we see in all those writings of Paul that that it didn't work. We, we, we see that, that, that Paul, he overcame that weakness, that he moved on from it. And so somebody may wonder, somebody may ask, well, how did Paul do that? How did he overcome who he once was? How did he overcome his weakness? Well, Paul, he said to all of us as believers in his letter to the church in Rome, didn't he say to us to not be conformed to the world? Didn't he say to us to be transformed? that new identity that we are taking on as a child of God. Didn't he tell us to, to let the Holy spirit renew us to let the Holy spirit have his work with us. So we may wonder, well, how did Paul not give in? We may wonder, well, how was Paul not held back by his weakness as, as some of us are today, how we are held back by our weakness. Our weakness may not be our past. It may be something else. So how did Paul overcome his weakness? Let's, let's take a look at it. Well, according to his writings, we'll see that Paul, he confronted himself. He did some introspection, if you will. You see, Paul, in order for him to write about the thorn in the flesh in the 12th chapter of 2 Corinthians, he had to first recognize that he had a thorn in the flesh. Many of us, we have a thorn in our flesh today, but we don't even realize it because we don't look within. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Introspection. Now, after he recognized the fact that he had a thorn in the flesh, Paul, he then turned to the Lord. And scripture tells us that he turned to the Lord thrice, three times. Mm -hmm. And he prayed to God about his thorn in the flesh. He prayed to God, in other words, about his hindrance, Mm -hmm. about his weakness. And we wonder how he got over it. He didn't get over it by himself. He didn't overcome his weakness by himself. He he confronted himself and then he turned to the Lord. I don't know if you hear me here today. Through his prayer, when the Lord had answered Paul, Paul learned that God's grace, it was sufficient. It was enough for him. 
He learned that the strength of God, that it was made perfect in his weaknesses. Do you know that today? That in your weaknesses, God's strength is made perfect. Do you know today that God's grace is sufficient for you in all of your flaws, in all of your faults, in all of your missteps, in all of your errors? Do you realize that God's grace is sufficient, that it is enough for you? See, one can only come to such an understanding through confronting themselves, through examining who they truly are on the inside. You see, through introspection, Paul found that he was loved and that he was accepted, not by the world, but by the Lord. God loved him in his faults and in his failures. All of the wickedness that that Paul admitted to, saying that his sins were greater than anybody else. And yet God still loved him. Mm -hmm. He was still favored in the eyes of God. Again, how did he overcome? He didn't do it by himself. He didn't overcome his weaknesses by himself. Mm -hmm. You see, Paul, when he realized that God loved him, he learned his value. He learned his worth. Isn't that how we say we learn our value and our worth by how somebody treats us, by how somebody loves us? When God loves you, you better know that you are valuable, highly valuable, highly worthy. And so because He knew his worth and that his worth was great because he knew that he was loved by the Lord. Paul, he didn't live a life where he was worried about what others thought of him. What others thought about his sin. That's why he was not held back by his weaknesses. That's why he was not held back by his sin. Because he knew that God loved him. When his adversary thought that he could hinder him because of his sin, because of his weakness, Paul said to his adversary, I have moved on from my weakness. Paul said to his adversary, I have gotten over it. I have overcome, overcame it. Paul, I want you to understand that he was empowered. He was empowered because he knew that he was favored in God's eyes. He was empowered because he knew that the Lord loved him for who he was. Paul confronted himself, was able to accept who he now was, He was able to move beyond his past, his weaknesses. He was able to move beyond his sin and he was able to stand boldly in who he was. He was able to stand boldly in his identity as a child of God. Are you able to do the same thing today? Do you do the same thing today? Who are you ashamed? See, where his adversary desired for him to be ashamed, uh, Paul, he said he wasn't ashamed of the Lord. See, some are afraid and ashamed to speak about their weaknesses today. As I said in the Sunday school lesson, a lot of us, we try to keep our weaknesses in the closet. We try to hide it up under a bed. We don't We don't want people to know our weaknesses. You know, we always want to appear strong. How can you appear strong when you always trying to hide everything? Uh Uh-oh. Uh-oh. It is Halloween season. People are always trying to wear masks. Ain't that what I said last week? People are always trying to wear a costume. See, Paul, he, he spoke with no shame about his weaknesses who he was, his sins. 
He wasn't ashamed to speak about how he had Stephen stoned and how he persecuted the church. You see, Paul, rather than let his weakness be used against him, he turned his weakness around to be a strength. He turned his weakness around to be a testimony about God's grace, about the Lord's mercy, and about God's salvation, that is, his deliverance. So in the end, this shows us the power in confronting one's self. This shows us the power in Paul accepting who he was. In accepting who he was, Paul was able to forgive himself. Have you forgiven yourself today? And see, even those who were once afraid of Paul, even those sincere believers who was once afraid of Paul, they even forgave him. Just imagine, just imagine how you could be if you confront who you are. I tell you today that your weakness it doesn't have to be a hindrance. Your sin, who you once was even, it doesn't have to be a hindrance to you. It doesn't have to be a hindrance to who you are today. If you confront yourself just as Paul did, you will come to realize you will come to know your worth. You will come to know that the Lord loves you. You will be able to stand in the power and the knowledge of the forgiveness that not just that the Lord has shown you, but the fact that you have forgiven and that you have accepted who you now are. And I tell you that that is true power because you learn self-control. But you see, there is something that is, is sad that happens. Many of us today even though we'll hear Paul's story, even though we'll hear about God's grace and the mercy that the Lord showed Paul, even in his wickedness, many of us, we still won't confront ourselves and we still won't turn to the Lord. You see, many of us, we haven't looked within our hearts because we haven't looked within our hearts today we don't really know who we are. You see, many of us, we are very hard on ourselves in that even though we hear that the Lord will let go of all of our transgressions against him, even though that we hear that God will show us mercy and forgive us of all of our sins, we don't think that we're worthy of such forgiveness. We, we, we just can't believe that God will forgive us and all that we have done. And the reason why that is, is because we haven't forgiven ourselves. But I want to show you today that you are worthy of that forgiveness, that you are worthy of that love from the Lord. And I'm going to show you that today from God's own mouth here in the 43rd chapter of Isaiah. We'll see here in the very first verse of the 43rd chapter of Isaiah that the Lord said to Israel, and he said this during a time where Israel was living in total wickedness, by the way. He said to them, fear not, for I have redeemed you. The Lord said to Israel, I have called you by your name. The Lord said to Israel, you are mine. They had been redeemed. You see, Israel, they, they were initially redeemed through the shed blood of a lamb. You see, y'all remember the night of Passover when they were in Egypt and how they shed the blood of a lamb. Y'all remember how God passed over them because they were redeemed by that blood. Even though they may have forgotten that, 
God's statement right there shows that he hadn't forgotten. Now, for all of us today who are of the church age, and Jesus has said the same thing to us, just to parallel that for you. Jesus said to us in the 10th chapter of Judge's gospel, he said that we are his. He said that we are of his flock. Jesus said that as the good shepherd, he knows us by our name. He knows us by our identity as one of his. So in parallel with the 43rd chapter of Isaiah, all of us who are of sincere faith today, we have also been redeemed by the blood of a lamb. So in our case, the lamb that shed blood for us was the only begotten son of God. See, I want you to understand today, we were redeemed of all of our sins through Christ. All of us was given a second chance because of Christ. So again, I must ask you today, do you really think that you're not worthy of God's love? That you're not worthy to be accepted by the Lord after the fact that he has given his only begotten son to shed blood for you? Do you truly think that you're not worthy to be forgiven after God gave his only begotten son again, all for your sins. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Now here in the first of my key verses for today, we'll see that God, he speaks to this. Again, this is a parallel as we'll see here in the 43rd chapter of Isaiah. God, he said to Israel that, if they would turn back to him, he said that he will blot out all of their transgressions. Y'all see that there? Then the Lord said there, he said that he would not remember all of their sins. Do y'all see that there? Now, I ask all of you this today, that if God is willing to blot out if he is willing to forgive all of your sins, if he is willing to move on from all of your transgressions, why aren't you willing to do the same for yourself? If God, the one we have sinned against, the one who we have transgressed against, the one who we have done wrongly. If he looks at you and he says, I'm willing to move on. Yeah, yeah. Why aren't you willing to forgive yourself? Why aren't you willing to confront who you are and then forgive yourself? What's going on? I want you to consider this today. Why do you think that God gave his only begotten son for you? You see, God, he did this because he desires to dwell in fellowship with you. You see, the Lord, he gave his only begotten son. And this goes all the way back to what I preached at the start of this year. He gave his only begotten son because he de desires better for you. He desires to be with you. He de desires to dwell in a fellowship with you. But the question again is this. Do you desire to dwell in fellowship with him? Who are you? You see, as we saw today in our Sunday school lesson, the Lord is not going to dwell with a sinner. He's not going to dwell with sin. He's not going to dwell with you so long as sin abides in your heart. It sounds like to me that you need to confront 
yourself. Learn who you are. You see, this great desire of the Lord, it is shown to us there in the second of my key verses, where once again, we'll see that God called on Israel to stand and to contend with him. Israel, they could walk with the Lord. We'll see, he said there, if they stated their case. That is, if they confessed their sins to him. God said that if they did that, they would be acquitted of all of their charges. They will be acquitted. They will be found innocent of all of their transgressions, of all of their sins. God said he wouldn't even remember them. That again, that's not from just my mouth. That is from the Lord's mouth. And again, this goes for all of us who are of the church age. Jesus, he taught us this. We referenced the first epistle of John in our Sunday school lesson. We again know that if we were to state our case, if we were to confess our sins, we know that God is both faithful and just to cleanse us of all unrighteousness. He will acquit you of your sins, of who you once were. Again, your weakness can be turned into a strength if, again, you confront yourself, if you love yourself, and again, if you then turn to and go to the Lord. You see, I tell you today that it is possible for you to overcome your weakness. I tell you today that it is possible for you to make your weakness a strength. Again, all you have to do is confront yourself in your soul. The Lord, he desires for you to do just that. God wants you to move on from your weakness. As we see the Lord tells Israel there again in the 18th and in the 19th verse, where God, he said to Israel, he told them, move on. He said, don't remember the former things. In other words, don't let your weaknesses have control over you. Always harping on the old things. Don't let them have control over who you are, but live in the newness of life. You are a born again believer. Why are you still letting sin have control over who you are? You know who's thrilled with that when you allow sin to have rule over you? The devil, he just sit back and he just smile. He smiles at his hand at work. When you refuse to confront who you are and you allow sin to have rule over you. And I tell you today that if the Lord finds you worthy of his grace, you too should find yourself worthy of God's grace as well. You see, the longer you go without confronting who you are, taking a deep look at, at who you are, taking a deep look at all your flaws, your faults, your errors, your missteps, your transgressions, the longer you go without doing that, the more your inner turmoil builds up. And then all of us, we are left with inner demons. You see, the devil, he does nothing but rejoices when you refuse to confront who you are when you refuse to accept who you are, when you refuse to then go to the Lord with all of your faults and all of your errors and all of your flaws, the devil, he rejoices because who you are, your identity, it's all just a game to him. He, he desires to keep you from discovering who you are. He doesn't want you to be empowered. As we saw in my sermon last week, he does not want you to have any power over who you are. He wants to have full control over you. And so the longer that you go without self-discovery, the more your inner turmoil, the more it festers inside of you. 
And the stronger and the stronger, the more powerful those inner demons become. You see, many of us, we lose ourselves today because we allowed our inner demons to fester and to grow into power and to take rule over us. Again, I say to you today that you must confront yourself so that you don't lose who you are. As I come to a close today, I want to tell you uh, one more who in scripture who temporarily lost himself because he let his inner demons take control of who he was. You see, there was a prophet of Israel that actually lost himself to his inner demons and his inner demons. They caused him to move against the Lord. Now, you may be wondering, well, pastor, who are you talking about? I'm talking about Jonah. The one who when God called on him to go to Nineveh, the capital city of the Assyrians, and to cry out against it because of his wickedness, Jonah, instead of accepting his call, he said, nope, not doing it. I'm going to go this way. I, I want nothing to do with Nineveh. You see, Jonah, he declined God's assignment for him. Jonah, he got on a boat to flee to Tarshish. In other words, Jonah, he again chose to run from God. He ran from his assignment. He disobeyed. In other words, Jonah, because he did not confront who he was, because he did not have any self-control, because his inner demons had ruled over him, he sinned against the Lord. You see, Jonah, he despised the Assyrians for what they did to Israel when they conquered Israel. You see, Jonah, he was filled with anger. He was filled with hate. He was filled with wrath towards the Assyrians. And so because he was filled with such, he did not do the work of the Lord. He ran away. And sadly, today, many of us, we are ruled by our inner demons, whether those demons are depression, whether those demons are despair or loneliness, whether those demons are fear or worry, anger, covetousness, lust. Some of us, we are ruled by these inner demons again because we haven't taken the time nor the effort to confront who we are in our hearts and those inner demons, they have rule over us and they pull us away from the Lord. They then cause us to move against God. And again, guess who takes pleasure in the inner demons having control over you? Guess who takes the reins of those inner demons and will have you go this way or that way, like he has a leash on you. The devil. Do you desire for the devil to have a leash on you today? Do you desire for the devil to tell you which way to go, left or right? Do you desire for the devil to have control over you? If you said no, uh-uh, no, sir, to me, then you must do what Jonah had to do. All right. Jonah was put into a position to where he had to confront his inner demon. Mm -hmm. He had to confront his inner demon, and just as Paul did, he then needed to turn to the Lord mm -hmm. and pray to God. Mm -hmm. If you're dealing with inner demons today, if you are dealing with an adversary that is trying to take control over you, I'd say to you today that you must confront who you are. Mm -hmm. You must confront yourself, all of your faults, all of your flaws, all of your errors. You okay. must confront yourself so that you can overcome your weaknesses. Know what your weaknesses are mm -hmm. and then take them to the Lord in prayer. Okay. 
And when you do this, God will give you all that you need to overcome your weakness. That is sin. God will strengthen you. He will turn your weakness into a strength and your adversary won't be able to stand. Your adversary won't be able to do anything to you won't have any kind of power over you because you have taken the power into your hands. You have taken control of your identity. You will no longer be identified as that inner demon. You will no longer be identified as that sinner. And the devil, he'll look at you and know that you belong to the Lord. And yes, he will try you. But as he failed with Paul, he will fail with you. And so I tell you today, I encourage you today, confront yourself. Learn your every weakness and take your every weakness to the Lord in prayer so that you don't lose yourself, but so that you gain yourself, so that you gain power, true power, in your identity, your real identity as that as a child of God. Amen. 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 Amen.